Hello everyone and welcome to the Gonville and Keys student Q&A session. Joined today by four of our lovely students. They're going to be answering lots of questions about student life, telling you about societies, about the accommodation, the food, all sorts of things like that. And um, so Cynthia, do you want to kick us off with a quick introduction about who you are and what you do? Um, hi, my name is Cynthia. I'm a second year at Keys. Um, I study PBS and do some of the Bionatsky papers as well. Um, I am part of college tennis and then um, do lots of like uni-wide cultural societies and international stuff. Amazing. Hannah, do you want to go next? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Hannah. I am a second year lawyer um, at Keys, like everyone here because it's a Keys event. Um, I'm really involved in the Cambridge Law Society. Um, so yeah, that's my, my big passion project. <laughs> Great. Alex? Hi everyone, I'm Alex. I'm in second year MML doing French and Russian and I'm also involved in Keys and the GCSU as Fresh as Reps. That's like the student union. Um, I'm also, I've also done like theatre at Cambridge and tried out a bit of like rowing and did debating, so a few different things. If you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. Yeah. Amazing. And then Ethan. Hi everyone, my name's Ethan and I'm a second year chemical engineer at Keys. I did my first year in uh, Fiznatsky, that's natural sciences. Um, and then around Cambridge, um, I've competed uh, in rowing and also mixed netball for Keys. Uh, and I'm also, I get active with the Cambridge ACS, that's the African Caribbean Society. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about any of those things. Yeah. Okay, amazing. So now we've done the introductions, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how you can send in any questions you might have. Um, so you'll see at the sort of bottom of your screen, there's a little panel with a Q&A function. So you can type in any questions you might have on that and then we can answer them for you and hopefully give you a bit of a flavour of what life is like at Keys. Okay, so to kick us off with, um, the, what would you say is your favourite thing about Keys? Uh, Cynthia, do you want to start? Um, so uh, probably my most favourite thing would be the library. Um, it's like a nice area in town and then we also have like the two levels which are really cool and it's like a nice quiet pretty place to study. Yeah it's a really lovely environment to be a student in. Hannah what would you say is your favourite thing? Um, like I'm sure Ethan and Alex will laugh at me because I say this all the time but Keys has this system called MDR which is a minimum dining requirement so you um, basically pay up front for 36 meals a term and you just get to eat in in we call it in hall um with all your friends and you can do it in formal hall where you put like your gown on or you can go to just cafeteria hall where you just go very casually um but i hate washing up so that really saves me a job and the food contrary to things on the student room the food is actually pretty good i'm sure the rest of the guys here will like support me in that so yeah mdr is my favorite thing nice alex how about you hi everyone i'm alex i'm in second year mml doing french and Russian, and I'm also involved in Keys and the GCSU as Fresh as Reps, that's like the student union. Um, I'm also, I've also done like theatre at Cambridge and tried out a bit of like rowing and did debating, so a few different things. If you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. Yeah. Amazing. And then Ethan. Hi everyone, my name's Ethan and I'm a second year chemical engineer at Keys. I did my first year in uh, Fiznatsky, that's natural sciences. Um, and then around Cambridge, um, I've competed in rowing and also mixed netball for Keys. Uh, and I'm also, I get active with the Cambridge ACS, that's the African Caribbean Society. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about any of those things. Yeah. Okay, amazing. So now we've done the introductions, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about how you can send in any questions you might have. Um, so you'll see at the sort of bottom of your screen, there's a little panel with a Q&A function. So you can type in any questions you might have on that, and then we can answer them for you and hopefully give you a bit of a flavour of what life is like at Keys. Okay, so to kick us off with, um, the, what would you say is your favourite thing about Keys? Uh, Cynthia, do you want to start? Um, so uh, probably my most favourite thing would be the library. Um, it's like a nice area in town and then we also have like the two levels which are really cool and it's like a nice quiet pretty place to study. Yeah, it's a really lovely environment to be a student in. Hannah, what would you say is your favourite thing? Um, like, I'm sure Ethan and Alex will laugh at me because I say this all the time, but Keys has this system called MDR, which is a minimum dining requirement. 
So you um, basically pay up front for 36 meals a term and you just get to eat in, in we call it in hall um, with all your friends and you can do it in formal hall where you put like your gown on or you can go to just cafeteria hall where you just go very casually um, but I hate washing up so that really saves me a job and the food contrary to things on the student room the food is actually pretty good I'm sure the rest of the guys here will like support me in that so yeah MDR is my favorite thing. Nice Alex how about you? Um, yeah, I was going to say MDR as well, but um, <laughs> I'd say <laughs> location of keys, definitely. So both um, the central, like, old courts in town is really nice when you have supervision, You're, like, walking there along King's Parade, it just looks amazing. And then there's the market square nearby. There's so much going on near the main courts, as well as, um, like, first year accommodation, which is all on the West Road site. And that's especially useful, like, quite practical if you're um, a humanities student, because all the lectures are on the Sidgwick site, which only, like, three to four minutes walk away from your first year accommodation and um yeah so I think location is um something which I really love about keys nice Ethan anything else you want to add sure and this might sound like a bit of a cringy answer but the people really like everyone at keys is just so friendly and you just get on with everyone so well especially at freshers and there is kind of a culture about the big colleges that people tend not to be so nice but actually keys is, is you know everyone is just really really nice and get along with everyone really well that's my favorite book Nice. Okay, so we've got a question in now about the accommodation at Keys. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's like? You know, how does it differ for the different years? Um, yeah, Cynthia, what's your take on the accommodation? Um, so I think the like the main thing that's different from Keys to everywhere else is that like our accommodation is scattered all around town. Um, so it's nice that first year you start like as Alex said, all together, like a little bit further out, but it's really peaceful. And then second year, people move around to like houses or like other staircases. And then third year, you all come back together to the old sites. Anything else, anyone else wants to add to that about accommodation? I'll just talk about um, first year accommodation a bit. It's split between two sites. Um, well, this year's been a bit different due to like lots of freshers, but mainly it's between Harvey Court site and Stephen, the Stephen Hawking building and they are right next to Sidgwick site. So basically all humanities faculties will be there. So you're like no more than like a two minute walk from your lectures if you're a first year and it's all en suite as well, which is really nice. You don't have to, sh you don't have to share a bathroom. <laughs> so there's that as well. Yeah, so I specifically asked the uh, Gumbling Keys offer accommodation for three years and yeah, they will offer it for the duration of your course. So none of that sort of stresses with private landlords or anything like that. You have this really high quality accommodation throughout the three years. Uh, so I asked now a little bit about the sort of friendships you make. So someone's asked, do you tend to make closer friends with people doing the same course as you? Or is it more sort of integrated based on colleges and things like that? How has been your experiences so far? Cynthia, how have you found it? Um, so I think it's like a mix of both. I will say uh, because PBS is a really small like community and there's only one other girl. So we are good friends. Um, but I would say like my closest friends honestly came from Freshers Week. Um, and it wasn't necessarily from like going out, but just like going to events and meeting a bunch of people. Um, and I think that's also a great way to like meet people who don't live around you. Because um, a lot of times friendships are just from proximity. Hannah, do you think your experience differs at all being a, a law student? Um, a little bit. Law students are like a bit strange. So I've like <laughs> found I've got a lot of friends that aren't law students. Um, but like the Cambridge Law Society is a great way to meet students from other colleges if you want to make friends like within your course. But I think what's nice about the collegiate system at Cambridge is you'll be put in a college with like to so say keys about 170 freshers that's like a group a small enough group where you can like make friends quite easily um without just being one big like thousands of freshers cohort so it doesn't mean that you're like stuck finding friends like just on your course like there's lots of different ways like in and out of college you can make friends how about you alex how have you found the whole friendship making process yeah, I would say it really depends on um, your course, especially. So MML is quite unique in the sense that we have classes as well as lectures and supervision. So our classes um, are like 10 to 12 people. 
um, from different colleges. And so that's a really, especially language classes, you always interact and like are having a conversation with other people. So it's a really good way of making friends outside of the college. But I would say, um, and this kind of goes back to the question about accommodation, the fact that first year accommodation is all together is a really nice way to like spend so much time. And there's always like something going on. You will know when there's something social going on in like one of the two buildings. And it's just a nice way to build friendships within the college as well, so yeah. And then finally, Ethan, anything you want to add about your experience? Yeah, sure. Um, so I feel like a lot of like your core friendships and your first sort of friendships are those that are just made in college, because as Alex said, you know, you're all in close proximity and so it's quite easy. Um, and especially when I, because of the first year Natsuki, um, and that natural science is a huge course at Cambridge to so the first year has got, you know, hundreds of students. Um, and so you tend to form close relationships with those in your college, but you know, it's quite easy at labs and um, uh, other uh, lectures and stuff to just interact and, and make friends with people from outside of your college as well. Um, but I found that like uni university wide societies and like sports clubs are probably the best way to make friends beyond the, your college um, from my experience. Uh, someone's asked specifically, Ethan, are there many Natsuki students at Keys, physical Natsuki students? Yeah, so the natural sciences course itself is incredibly broad because it kind of merges together all the sciences. Um, and uh, at Cambridge White, across a year group, there's about, I'd say 400, 600 students. I don't know the exact numbers, but even at Keys, um, it's one of the more, more, most popular uh, subjects. And there's at least, uh, there's about 26 of us, half physical, half biological. So physical natural sciences, about 13, um, which is still a good number. And, and yeah, you, you, get, you get to know everyone pretty much. Great, a good response there, everyone. Uh, so a little bit about the food now. Um, so what are the sort of options like? Um, how does it sort of work in terms of, you mentioned a little bit about the formals before, Hannah. Do you want to sort of add a little bit more to that now? Sort of explain a little bit more about how things work. Yeah, I'll try my best. Um, so the way it's worked for us like last year was you book before up to 10 o'clock on that day, but like up to about a week before. Um, so you'll see the menu, um, you, you book, if you're a bit, I'm a pescatarian, so on my profile it just says that I'm a pescatarian, but if you're not you can book in pescatarian or vegetarian or vegan and they always accommodate, I'm pretty sure they have halal as well, so Keys is pretty good with providing lots of options. Um, and then for formal hall, they'll bring your food to you, it's like a waiter service and candlelit and very like grand, but not as grand as other colleges like don't be put off it's still quite cool like I'm sure Ether's gone in sliders sometimes like it's not that <laughs> not that um that stressful whereas at Caf Hall you like get a tray and you like walk your tray along like very cafeteria style um and like the way it kind of works is you'll have like a, a main and sides so if you don't like I don't know broccoli and it's there you don't have to have it and it's three courses yeah three courses at both formal and Caf and on Saturday they do ice cream, which is elite. It's very good. I always get some Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> nice, that's definitely a good thing to look forward to at the weekend. Um, so we talk a little bit now about sort of societies and sports. Um, so you mentioned your sort of intro bits, the kind of things you were interested in getting involved with. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about those and see if anyone's got any very sort of specific questions following on from them? Uh, Cynthia, do you want to give it a start? Yeah, so this year um, I'm one of the captains for college tennis and so um, this is for like a lot of the college sport societies and um, they're normally very like casual and you have like leagues and cuppers where you pl will play against other colleges so it's a good way to like um, start a new sport if you're interested or just play continue playing something that you've already done um, and then also uni-wide I do like a lot of cultural stuff so like I'm Canadian and there's like a Canadian club and then there are like different Asian societies um, and there's also the like this Cambridge Union student union has an international campaign so I'm part of that as well and we're mainly focused on like welfare activities and activities for the incoming international freshers. Nice, uh, Hanno, would you like to tell us a little bit more about sports societies, sports and societies you get up to? Um, well, I could talk about society because I don't play any sports. Um, but so, law society, like Cambridge Law Society, is 
um, it's like one of the biggest societies in the country it focuses a lot on like careers and speakers and socials so they invite people in so if anyone here's interested in law lady hale came and did a talk last year and she was the old president of the supreme court in the uk so there's lots of like in opportunities like that that you can attend or you can like go meet people at the socials um something i will say is that it's really like simple to set up a society if there's something you're interested in that's like not there so like me and a couple other boys have set up at the Cambridge University Bread Baking Society we're trying to get that off the ground um we became an official society this summer and one of like our friends Josh Black he's set up the Star Wars Society so like if there's ever an area where you think oh there's that's an interest that I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would like get behind it's super super simple like or a lot more simple than you would think to set something up. So yeah. Nice. Alex, what's been your experience of societies and sports? Um, so I think the main thing which I've done, which is like very much a thing right now is Freshers Rep. So like on the GCSU, um, the Government and Key Student Union, I've like looked after the incoming freshers who will be starting this October and also did some things for our year. So we had like a marriage formal, which is a Cambridge tradition where you get um, college married to like a good friend and um, it just means that you can have college children the following year and um, so you kind of look after them, give them pastoral and, and like kind of academic advice as, a, as someone who's been through everything. Um, but on the GCS, you, there are many different roles. So you, there's like the green officer, um, there's the obviously the president, vice president, um, there's BME and LGBTQ plus. And so there's lots of different ways you can get involved in the GCS. You, um, as well as that, um, I've done, I did like a French play in Michaelmas term. So in the first term of um, my first year, it was like a French bilingual play. But as Ethan said earlier, I think it's a really good way just to get to know people outside of your college as well. Because there, um, there were people who obviously shared the same interests and like passion for languages and theatre as um, I have. And then it was just great to meet people. Yeah. And um, I would also encourage you to try out anything, even if you don't feel very confident um, about it. So like rowing, I'd never ever thought of doing before, but we had this one afternoon session where we could all try and like I tried it out. I really enjoyed it. So I did it for the first term, um, but the early mornings were a bit much for me. But I think it is, <laughs> it was, I would like, would have regretted not doing it. So like, I think definitely just go for whatever um, takes your fancy and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great chance to sort of try something new, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. Ethan, what sort of societies and activities are you involved with? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, actually very similar experience there with Alex uh, in terms of rowing. Um, I tried out rowing for the first time. Okay. Can you, can you hear me? Does it sound good? Yeah, we can hear you yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, my internet connection is a little unstable, apparently. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so yeah, so this year I have been competing uh, in M2. Uh, so that's our second men's boat for uh, Keys Boat Club, the rowing club. And um, yeah, Alex was saying it's a lot of early mornings that I just had to get used to. Um, but doing that ski, I've had quite a lot of 9 a.m. So it's just, and I find it's a nice place to just get up in the morning and it gets my exercise. It's really good for exercise, basically. Um, and I've also been doing a bit of uh, competing uh, in uh, college netball league as well, or mixed mixed netball. Um, and as uh, Cynthia was saying with tennis, um, the college sports um, themselves, besides rowing, just they tend to be quite casual. They're not too competitive, um, which is nice because it means that I can just, you know, play on a Saturday morning if I'm free. And it's, it's just good fun um, to do that. Um, and then I also mentioned that in my spare time, I attend some events hosted by the African Caribbean Society, which is essentially one of the cultural societies uh, at Cambridge aimed at black students and those with African or Caribbean heritage. Um, and it's just a really nice space to um, meet with, uh, you know, other BME and black students at the university. And they, they put on a lot of uh, socials and formals, but also like discussions and panels uh, and that kind of thing. And I've made quite a lot of them uh, into uh, college friends uh, through, through the ACS. Nice. So I'm specifically asked, do you have to join the societies at your specific college or other university wide ones you can join too? Um, so it's very much up to you. You don't have to join any societies if you don't want to. It's really just about choosing the ones that are most sort of exciting to you. And yeah, if you want to do things kind of more casually, meeting other people within the sort of college environment, you can do it at the college level. Or if you want to do something that's quite sort of specific and you know, isn't necessarily on offer at all colleges, then you might choose to do a uni-wide sort of one. So there are advantages and disadvantages to both. There isn't a particular like way in which you have to do it. 
Um, so I know we touched on accommodation before, but there's been a few more accommodation ones that have come in. So if we answer those now, uh, what are the best and worst things about the rooms at Keys? Uh, Cynthia, do you want to start with this? Um, I think so. I don't know if this is a little bit best and worst. Um, best thing is like first year, you have the best accommodation you'll probably get just because you have the ensuite and like the buildings are more modern and everyone's together. So it's really nice. Um, and then from there, it kind of deteriorates. Um, so not to the point where it's unhabitable, but like when I moved into my room this year, I noticed the furniture was a lot older. You have to share bathrooms, which is a little bit of a pain. Um, and like the gyps too, the kitchens are a little bit less modern. Um, but I think, uh, so there's like pros and cons to that, but it is nice to move closer into town. Mm -hmm. How about you, Hannah? What would you say your best and worst things are? Yeah, I think as Cynthia kind of touched on briefly, like location, well, well, like you're a bit further out in first year, but then in second year, you have the opportunity to come like right into the centre. And then in third year, like Old Courts is like very, very central. So we'll likely all be back in the centre of town. So that means just things are easy to get to, um, which is really nice. Um, worst things, very specific. Keys like has the same carpet in all of its accommodation, and it's this like awful brown, and it's quite dreary. So yeah, I I would probably say the carpet. <laughs> bring bring it around with you. Top advice. Um, one for you, Alex. Um, the, is it expensive to live at Keys? Like roughly, what are the sort of rough room sort of costs, like um, food costs, things like that? Um, so it really depends on like first year especially depends on which band you choose to so like there are in um Stephen Hawking building there's only band B rooms and then in Harvey Court there's bands A, B and C so A is the largest and C is the smallest um so your rental will depend on that um I think I mean it is affordable and anyone who has um financial concerns can always speak to their tutor about that and get um and hopefully get some kind of assistance or like if you discuss with tutors they are very understanding and very receptive so they will go and speak to um, the senior tutor and the bursa as well and so um, definitely don't let any costs put you off um, applying yeah that's what I would say. yeah we do have quite generous like bursaries available at the college um, and all sorts of things like that so we definitely don't want finances to put anyone off in the slightest I was just going to say, yeah, the accommodation in second year, you can be central, but also what a lot of people like is being like a bit further out and having a shared kind of house with a few friends. And I think that's also really nice about Keys because it means there's such a large variety of accommodation types you can go for. And um, it means you get that experience while you're at university with your friends in that environment. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the so you touched a little bit on the um, sort of financial support side. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about the sort of pastoral support that's on offer? Um, should I, I talk about like tutors a bit, like the pastoral Yeah, Yeah, pastoral is um, great. So you have a tutor that isn't in your subject. So I am a lawyer, but my tutor was uh, a fellow at college. So that's like an academic, um, but she was an engineer. So I could go to her for any wealth, welfare support I needed and you just kind of feel comfortable because they're not in your subject if you have something going on in your subject that you don't want to bring up with your director of studies who is in charge of your academic journey you can go to your tutor instead and yeah like essentially they're just there for anything um if you ever need to have a conversation uh you can go and have them they're like your first point of contact and they we have a college nurse so if there's anything that you speak to them about, they might put you in touch with the college nurse. Alternatively, you can just go straight to the college nurse. Um, but yeah, your tutors are a really good role. Um, another, like, I know that like pastorally, sometimes you don't want to go to adults and especially now like going to university, we are all adults. Um, like Alex might as well talk about this because he's spent his whole summer like arranging it, but you have like a college family. So I'll, I'll let Alex take that, but that's a really good source of pastoral support as well. Alex, do you want to expand a little bit more uh, on the college family system? Yeah, so the college families, um, basically you have college parents who are second year students um, and then the freshers rep every year um, assigns the each college marriage, um, so each set of college parents, the college children who are incoming freshers. And um, usually it's just done like by subject 
Um, so if you do the same subject as your college parents, then you'll kind of be within the subject randomly assigned to them. But this year, I've um, I use like a survey system instead. So within the subject, I try to match people up based on interests and hobbies which they share with each other, which I hope has worked out well because I kind of released that last week. So everyone now is in contact with their college children. Um, and it, it means that as a first year, I mean, Hannah and I were college siblings, which is really cool. And we were so lucky to have such a supportive family. I know our college parents were, were always there when we ever we had any questions or needed to talk about anything. So it just is a way of, someone who's been through what you are going through right now in first year basically and knows what like how tough it can be moving to university or even like for me moving from Australia as an international student my college mum was also uh, she was in, she lives in France so she's also international she kind of knows how like that works and how you could feel at different times so I think it's just really helpful to have the college family system yeah it's such a nice way to, to have friends as well in other years which can be nice as well yeah how about you Ethan anything else you want to add on the pastoral side or do you feel everything's been covered uh, yeah I was just going to mention so we have our student like a uh, union or student team as well GCSU we call them common mm -hmm. student union and um there we have two welfare officers as well so if you ever have any uh, issues with health or well-being and um, you can go to the welfare officers because they're just students as well um but also if there are any specific issues um so we've got a BME officer and the lgbt uh, plus officers alex was uh, mentioning earlier so if there's any specific issues um in terms of those areas and you can there's always a person um with a slightly high level of authority that you can go to um if you want to raise any issues or anything like that which is great yeah, it's always good to know that there's plenty of different people that you can turn to. You've always got lots of different options for support available at the college. Um, so someone's asked a little bit about the sort of workload um, and how to sort of manage that. Um, so one person's kind of interested to know about how does it vary between different courses, like what the workload's like and how does that sort of affect the socialising sort of side of things. Um, Hannah, do you want to take this one? Um, yeah, I can talk from a humanities point of view. So like Ethan can probably, me and Ethan are quite good friends and he had a lot more work to do than I did, like 100%. Um, so for humanities, I think most of your lectures are between 9am and 1. They don't really go on past then. And I had 11 contact hours a week, um, nine of those being lectures. And I had like two supervisions a week, which are an hour long each. Um, so you don't have that many hours face to face teaching, but you get long reading lists. So you have a lot of independent work. Um, it's ultimately completely manageable. I think like most people were surprised at how you can just manage it and everyone finds their own ways of doing that so some people uh, like like getting up early and working some people just try and put it all in the middle of the day some people work late into the night um keys library in normal times opens 7 a.m to 1 a.m so you can't pull an all-nighter which is quite nice i don't think keys promotes an unhealthy working culture but they do accommodate for those that want to have a lie-in and work later in the evening so yeah, um, also for law, I can only speak for law, but on the reading list, there's um, always things that are starred. So like priority reading and then extra reading. And then there'll be like some things like read this when you can or catch up on this over like the Christmas break or Easter break. We only have, terms are only eight weeks long. So you never have too much to do. And if you run out of time, you can just catch up over breaks if that makes sense. So yeah, from a humanities, it's more independent work than face-to-face uh, -face teaching, but definitely doable. How would you say that differs for you, Ethan, as a natural sciences um, slash yeah, engineer? Yeah, quite, quite different. <laughs> so um, for a lot of the STEM courses at Cambridge, so things like, you know, maths, uh, natural sciences, engineering, medicine, um, uh, all of those sort of courses, it's a lot more contact, uh, contact heavy. So there'll be a lot more focus on lectures. Um, and um, question sheets for your supervisions and then maybe laboratory classes as well um, or for the medics, you know, dissection, things like that. Um, so you'll find that a lot of your schedule will be taken up by those sessions and, and there'll be a lot more. Yeah, it, it's sort of closer. It's linked to school in the fact that it's a bit more rigid and you've, you've got to, you know, do look, go to all these lectures and, and do all of these things. Um, so that means there's less room for independence. But um, Internet problems again. 
Um, yeah, so for STEM students, there's less sort of independence. It, it's more kind of geared around the particular like contact hours, um, but it is still sort of manageable. You can still definitely have a life and get involved in lots of different sort of social things. Cynthia, you're also a STEM student. Would you like to tell us a little bit about sort of your experience of the workload and how you sort of weigh up the different demands on your time? Um, yeah, so for PBS, it's interesting because I think the core PBS stuff tends to be more humanities but then you can take like a mix of other things. So um, for me, like Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays were my like humanities days. So I would just have one or two lectures and then maybe a supervision in the afternoon. And then Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays um, were like my Natsuki days. And then I would have two lectures in the morning and then labs in the afternoon and supervisions. So in that sense, like as Ethan was saying, it's a lot more structured, um, but I think there are definitely gaps in your schedule, your timetable. So you can definitely get your work done in the day and then the evening you can have fun and go out and stuff. Yeah, there's definitely enough time to kind of, yeah, make the most of all the other opportunities that are on offer at Cambridge. Um, so does anyone have any sort of medic friends? I know nobody studies medicine here, but does anyone know much about what it's like to study medicine and what sets it apart from other colleges? I mean, I think the main thing is that Keys has the largest number of medic students um, compared to all other colleges where, I mean, Keys himself, the, the person was um, a medic um, and he founded the college. So I think um, that's, it has, it gives the college its like character and also its reputation for being a medicine college. Um, and in terms of like um, the academic life, I guess they have, um, it's like STEM subjects, they have a lot of 9am early lectures and a lot of like contact hours in general. Um, it's quite an intense course um, and they have like, I know every term, I think this year they had kind of mock exams at the end and beginning. So it was, it was definitely quite a rigorous um, course. But I think as with any course, like I was just going to say for ML, for example, we have that additional kind of, although we're humanities, we also have those classes and you have to do homework for the classes as well as supervision. So I feel like um, there are, whatever your subject is and how much work you have, as the others have said already, you always somehow manage to do it. And um, I think the important thing is not, and this is kind of something which I had to work on myself, but not to become, or not to be a perfectionist, because sometimes it's just important to be happy with whatever you produce and give yourself some downtime, some time to relax, because you can't just, go um, like full force all the time otherwise yeah it would, it would just be exhausted by the end yeah oh and I wanted to add something too um, this is what I've heard from other medics at Keys is that um, because Keys has like Alex was saying the reputation of lots of medics and stuff um, they tend to get more supervision essays than other colleges um, so like all medics have like the structured supervisions um, but then I know Keys students tend to get a couple more essays um, but it hasn't stopped lots of them from going out and stuff. So I think it's totally manageable. Um, so someone's asked about a weekend free from lectures and supervision. So that is something that may vary a bit sort of course to course. And um, what would you say your experience of that has been, Cynthia? Um, so because I'm like half Natsuki, Saturdays are completely like mornings. I have lectures, so can't do that. I have some Comsky friends who have lectures and supervisions on Saturday, so their whole day is blocked out. Um, but you can work around it. Like I've managed to take trips to London when I leave, like right after my last lecture, and then you have all of Sunday too, so you can still fit some stuff in. How about Hannah? Do you have many um, supervisions or lectures on a weekend? Uh, I have none. I never have i'm really grateful for that i know that the if you do maths you have saturday lectures as well they have saturday lectures um but yeah <laughs> doesn't affect me <laughs> alex do you have any for mml um every now and then yeah we do it's um we have like a sub, something on saturday morning or um but also i think it depends mml is quite uh, varies a lot depending on the language which you choose and different languages are structured quite differently so russian which I'm doing is probably one of the more intense languages. Um, with German, for example, you can kind of choose your papers, so like modules or topics which you want to do from the beginning of first year. Um, so there's a bit more, you can choose which lectures you need to go to and which ones you don't need to go to. Whereas Russian and French, for that matter, you kind of have to do everything and go to every lecture and 
podcast. So um, there's a few more hours required. So we've had a few more questions in about the rooms again. Um, so someone's asked whether they're all single rooms um, or whether there are any double rooms. Um, what's the sort of kitchen situation with accommodation as well? Um, Alex, do you want to take this one? Sure. So yeah, um, there are both single and double rooms um, in but yeah, in all kind of years for accommodation in Key. So in first year, um, in both buildings, Stephen uh, Hawking Building and Harvey Court, there will be double beds and single beds in different rooms. Um, with kitchens, um, it depends on the specific kitchen. So I know that in Harvey Court, there are two kind of larger kitchens, or we call them gyps, which is just another word for a communal kitchen. Um, um, and the, they can fit, they have tables in them and, and chairs so people can sit and eat in the, in the kitchen. Um, with most kitchens in Harvey Court, there's not enough room for that. And um, you just cook your meal there and then bring it back to your room or take it wherever you want to eat. Um, but kitchens can become communal, communal spaces as well, which is nice just to like socialize. Um, and yeah, in other buildings, for second and third year accommodation, it also depends. So I know I'm saying in Green Street where there is quite a large kitchen with ovens and um, like hobs and everything. And then in other buildings, there aren't necessarily ovens, but it depends, I guess you choose based on whether you know you want to cook a lot or whether you're going to be using the MDR more or like, so it, it is, it works out for everyone always, yeah. Okay, someone's asked about how social distancing is being managed at Keys at the moment. So we've got a sort of household-based system. Um, Hannah, do you feel comfortable expanding on this at all? Yeah, I can, I can try. Um, so yeah, so we're all split into households, which they've just communicated with us. So we all know which household we're in and we're being expected to follow government advice. So whatever happens, if we have to lock down, we'll lock down as a household and everyone is in a household, which is quite nice. Um, I think smallest households are like a four maybe. So if there isn't ever a time where we have to actually like a second lockdown happens um, none of us will be alone everyone's got people they can speak to and um so CAF and MDR this year will be done on a takeaway service or an eating service but with your household so you won't have the opportunity to go and just go with anyone but you will have like friends to go with if you want to eat in um and I think like we have to wear masks in communal spaces. So um, if we're going to the laundry room or walking through college, um, we wear masks. Um, Cambridge wide, like with supervisions and stuff, most of them are taking place in person in Cambridge and not with masks, I think just from a distance, but it's been really good. Like from what I've like read in the communication I've got for law, it's kind of like, if you feel uncomfortable and want to wear a mask, you so can. If the, the supervisor feels uncomfortable and wants to wear a mask or do the classes like virtually, they will. So it's very plan it by ear and quite responsive. Oh, and also we're having weekly testing. So the univer that's university wide, we, we can get tested weekly, which is really good. Great, that's a really good response to that one. Um, how competitive is Gonville and Keys to get into compared to the other colleges? Um, uh, so we have something called the pooling system. Um, does anyone want to explain the pooling system in a, little more, a bit more sort of detail and how that all works? I can take this one. Um, so basically, once you have been invited for interview, if the college or if a college um, likes you but just doesn't have the space for you that year but sees you as a strong candidate they will put you in um, the the winter pool which means that other colleges can take you out and then you'll be given an offer for a different college so um, it's a hard question how competitive is keys because that changes per subject per year it's you just can't gauge and um, also like I know there's quite a lot of lawyers, quite a lot of medics, quite a lot of historians at Keys, but then that also correlates usually to more applications. So you can't even say just because they take more that it's less competitive. But over like overwhelmingly, if you are a strong candidate, like they should hopefully find a place for you. It may not be at the college you've applied for, but the pool system is in place that like people don't slip through the gaps. Um, so yeah. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Cynthia? Sorry, I just wanted to add, there's also a summer pool. So um, that does depend on though you getting an offer initially, 
but if you don't meet your offer or like you get the grades and like the wrong subjects um you can you'll go into another summer pool and then colleges that have like students more empty spaces because other students meet their didn't if other colleges have empty spaces because their other students didn't meet their offers then they could take you in as well so um yeah as long as you get that interview like um from there the chances are a lot better yeah someone's asked specifically for pbs like how many places they are and how popular it is cynthia what's your sort of take now? i know you have the exact sort of figures but roughly um what's sort of available for pbs um, so at Keys, um, we generally accept to a year is like the baseline. Um, and yeah, I think it's always been two. And then if you don't meet the offer, then it's like one. Um, but there are other colleges like Girton, I think, has four PBS. Um, Fitz, I think, might have a bit more too. So that one generally depends on the college. But again, like Hannah was saying, um, as long as you get an interview from one college, then yeah you'll you'll most likely get in yeah the pool system is there to try and make it as sort of fair as possible so really it's about choosing the college which you think is really appealing to you sort of through the sort of open days or sort of things like that and then um yeah making that application and then sort of you may get reassigned to a different college but ultimately you know i'm sure most people are happy wherever they sort of end up even if they have been pooled so don't let it put you off sort of applying to a place even if you think it will be sort of more competitive to get into because it won't impact your chances of getting into the university as a whole and um, so again people have asked about medicine um so again i know we don't have any medics here so it's hard to sort of speak exactly um but does anyone have any sense from sort of friends that are medics about what the interview process is like um it's absolutely fine if you don't but anyone got many medic friends I don't think it's particularly um, like too different to other subjects in the sense that, well, at least within STEM, you will have two to three interviews and um, they will be based on your, I guess, your knowledge of what you studied in your science subjects at school and then extend on that, obviously, to push you a bit more um, and gauge your interests and your, and your ability to think in um, the same ways which you would need to do for the course at Cambridge. Um, so in that sense, I don't think it's anything, anything too, like, surprising or or different yeah okay we've got any more questions coming in anything else people would like to know about gonville and keys the sort of societies the food the accommodation anything at all that people are curious to know about um, any i've just sorry. oh sorry i've just seen one in the chat about law which i can answer about the law interview go for it um uh, I don't know if it's different to interviews at other colleges um, but as a rule you well every college will sit the Cambridge law test at interview that's something that's quite different other courses have the test before interview um, and most colleges will either do uh, an interview where they'll give you something to read before or in the interview hall and you'll talk about it or just a general discussion about your personal statement and your motivations for law. So, and there's a really good um, mock interview on YouTube for law. It's like the whole thing. The guy in it is like, was my supervisor this year. He's so like that in real life. Like if you were interviewed there, that is exactly what an interview would be like. So it's very accurate. Um, but yeah, so I don't, I don't think the key law interview is like very different to other colleges. They're pretty, pretty standard. Um, in general, do people have tips for interview? Um, Cynthia, like, do you have any sort of advice you'd give somebody that's um, interested in doing an interview for PBS? Um, so PBS, uh, again, is different because it has the two sides. Um, so um, our interview reflects that as well because you get a mix of questions, like some are more conceptual ones that um, you don't really have like hard facts that you can answer with. You just explain like your perspective and all. Um, we did get like math questions and biology questions. Um, so for those like, and I think this is a tip on like the Cambridge interview video that they have. Um, but like when you're working through a problem, definitely like explain what it is you're doing, like all the steps, why you're multiplying this by that and everything. Um, Cause then if you like struggle along the process, um, 
the interviewer can see what you were doing and they'll tend to like give you hints and clues to help you get to the right answer. Um, so you don't need to be scared at all if you don't get it right away. Um, they don't expect you to. So. Yeah, they're definitely not looking for sort of finished perfection. They just want to see that you've got, got the potential to really sort of work through problems and try and sort of see things in different perspectives. Um, Alex, do you have any tips for interview? Yeah, definitely. I think interviewers are looking at how receptive and teachable someone is. So if you listen, just listen a lot and then also respond to what they're saying. So if you, this is, I guess, more of a humanities perspective, but if you're asked, if you're discussing a text, um, and talking about an argument which you think the author is putting forward and the interviewer suggests something slightly different or kind of a counterpoint, you, I think it's definitely good to kind of show that you're incorporating that, that new knowledge into your um, thought process and, and somehow then using that to continue your explanation, your argument. So, um, but there's no need to be um, scared or nervous because I don't think any of them are there to try and catch you out or trick you. It's just it's very much just to see how well you can um, think and use information yeah, to develop your own thoughts. How about you, Ethan? Do you have any tips for interview? Um, yeah, so I hope you can hear me this time. But um, yeah, uh, so similar to what Cynthia was saying, especially with a lot of um, STEM interviews where they'll be going through throughout along the way if you're, if you're struggling. Um, so it's not something that's, you know, you hear all these horror stories about interviews and some of the nasty questions that you might get asked. Um, but it's really, it's, 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 it's far from that. They're just trying to model uh, supervision. So that's sort of the, the close contacts teaching that we'd get at the uni anyways. Um, and they're just trying to see whether that's the kind of teaching environment that would work best for you. Um, so that's what I'd say. Yeah, great response. Okay, have you got any tips for the applications process in general? So things like through the personal statement or just as you're approaching admissions assessments or anything like that. Um, Cynthia, do you have any tips? Um, yeah, so I I probably don't have like the best advice just because um, I am not, my first glance at the admissions process was when I was actually doing it myself. Um, so the only thing that I had really to go off of was because I was applying to PBS, I did like almost an A-level equivalent, equivalent of psychology. Um, so um, I knew for like the admissions test, it would be more maths bio. Um, so I like reviewed some of the concepts I learned from school for that and then for the interview I just reviewed what I learned from like AP psychology. Um, so yeah, other than that, I'm not too sure like I don't think my personal statement is really all that good compared to others just because I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, so yeah. <laughs> How about you Hannah, do you have any tips for personal statement or admissions assessments? Uh, yeah, um, I mean it's like the most obvious and like if you read any advice like it'll say this but just try and have like lots of super curriculars and for Cambridge stay away from the extracurricular so if you're applying for law like what books have you read what lectures have you listened to this I mean this applies for all subjects to be honest there's so many lectures online and a lot of Cambridge faculties will have their own YouTube channel which has like lectures on there which you can access um but they're not so concerned about whether you've done work experience or whether you've done DV or something. Like that's important to put on, especially for, because your application won't just go to Cambridge, it'll go to um, lots of other unis, but I, a good split is kind of like 80, 20, um, but probably no less than 80, like really academically focused. Um, also another bit of advice, the Cambridge has a supplementary application questionnaire, the SAQ. Um, which gives you the option to write an additional personal statement, which I know at the time really stressed me out. And if you're doing a subject, like applying for the same subject at all five of your unis, so your personal statement is very tailored to your subject, there's no need to write the additional personal statement. But if you're doing a subject like maybe Natsuki, which isn't really offered widely, then like I would make really effective use of the SAQ. But if you don't think you need to use it, don't use it. And it doesn't affect your chances. So yeah, that's a good bit of advice there, I think. Yeah, that's a very good tip. Alex, any tips you'd give? Yeah, I would say definitely make sure you've, I think, again, you'd find this on all the advice you can find online, but make sure you've read everything you've written in your personal statement because you don't want to be asked about something which you've put down thinking, oh yeah, I'll read that later. Or, like I've read half of it, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then come to your interview and 
you asked about that for half an hour and yeah it's just not a good look to, to have um also i think with the saq it gives you the opportunity to put down more kind of um i guess factual stuff about what you've learned um what topics you've discussed on different subjects at school and so don't um i wouldn't use the space and time on your personal statement to discuss those really basic things i would spend make sure like every word counts in the personal statement to show that you've gone beyond um, just yeah gone beyond the school curriculum and done your own things to show your interest in the subject yeah then finally, Ethan, do you have any tips for the application? Uh, yeah, sure. So I, uh, just following on from what um, Alex was saying, um, they're really, a lot of the Cambridge admissions students are really looking for where you've gone beyond, you know, the A-level syllabus and actually gone out of your way to find what is so interesting about your subject and read around that. Uh, and that's something you definitely want to get across in your personal statement. Um, so really think creatively about how you can do that. You know, a lot of, I see a lot of STEM personal statements or, 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 or you know, there's a big cliche of, oh, I've just read this book by this doctor and, you know, or attended this lecture and, and so on. But you You've really got to talk about what specifically within that subject or within that topic is what interests you and, and what has that uh, you know inspired you to to go on to do you know try to link together some of those super curricular experiences that you've had um, and answers where you've actually been able to in a, really uh, investigate that passion for your subject because at the end of the day that's what they're looking for more than anything else I, I, I'd say at least but yeah um, someone's asked with interviews about scientific majors so I guess where you're sort of focusing more on the kind of sciencey side of things and um, will they discuss the contents of that in the um, personal state statement like things that they mention in the personal statement as well I, I think is what they're trying to say so is that at interview will they ask you things from the personal statement is that well in interviews about specific asking? about scientific majors discuss contents in applicants personal statements as well so yeah i think just will they discuss it so yes they they may well do they don't have to and um, there's all sorts of different things in which an interview could cover um and so yeah your personal statement may form a basis of it also some people may not have the personal statement discussed at all so it's not a sort of yeah. golden rule there each person's mm. interview will be like a little bit different based on the course they're applying to, the college they're applying to, the individual interviewer they have. It's all a kind of very like different experience designed to sort of emulate what a supervision might be like sort of at the at the university, whether you can engage with that sort of style of teaching and really sort of benefit from it. Okay, we're running short of time. To... Sorry? So I just wanted to add to that as well, because um, I have heard that some interviewers might ask questions about your personal statement right at the start of the interview, just to kind of warm you up to it, because, you know, that's the sort of content you should be familiar with and, you, you know, you, you recognise and you would have looked into. So they might ask you that at the start, just so that you kind of ease you into the interview, sort of. That's a, that, I, I did get a question like that in one of mine, so, yeah. How about you, Cynthia? Um, sorry, I wanted to add, so for me, it's probably different from everyone. Um, one of, so I had two interviews, one of them was strictly on psychology topic the other one was actually a personal statement interview um, so they spent the first half of it like going through my personal statement and asking me about all the things I'd written and then the second part was just like a small activity um, so yeah it'll probably vary but I had one that was solely focused on my personal statement okay we'll just have one last question um, what facilities are available at the college so both in terms of like the sort of teaching facilities like supervision rooms and things like that also like sports facilities like the sort of gyms um fields things like that um alex do you want to take this one sure so there are um supervision facilities like in the college um most of your supervisions depending on your subject actually but for me for example most of my um supervisions are within the college um and so the fellows are based at keys um and then with sports there's a gym in harvey court so that's in the first year accommodation building um, so you get a membership either one year or like a three to four, I think like a lifetime membership basically for as long as you're at the college. Um, and it's very well priced. I've forgotten the exact, I think it's maybe 15 pounds for three, four years, or maybe that's Ethan may know. But um, there's also a gym in the boathouse as well. So if you row, um, that's a really nice gym. It's got more equipment than the Harley Court gym. Um, and it's if you cycle, it's about yeah. 10 minutes away or 15 minutes away. But like if you walk, it's probably half an hour walk away from um, yeah. old courts. Yeah. OK, great. Oh, Cynthia. And then I just want to say there are also music rooms, which yeah. are really great. So you don't have to be a music student um, 
to like use the rooms to bring your own personal instruments or like there's a piano too and a ping pong table. Yeah, there's lots of different stuff depending on what you're interested in. There's definitely be a sort of space for you to get involved with that at the sort of college. Um, so that's all we've got time for now. Thank you very much to everyone that joined us today. And thank you to all of our student panelists for their excellent responses to all of the questions. If you do have any more questions that we didn't manage to get answered, then feel free to send us an email, admissions at cai.com.uk or schools at cai.com.uk. Um, you can also chat to some of our students on the access platform, which we have available on our website. I'll send some links out after this with the sort of details for this so that you can sign up without having to remember as I'm sort of talking them out. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining everyone um, and hopefully see you soon. Bye.